Hello and welcome back. So in yesterday's video we created the created the hit effect where you can click on this guy and it, it moves the hit effect around the object. Um, in the next video we're going to create something like this where we have a Fresnel effect that um, sort of brightens the edge of the shield. Now in today's video we're going to actually be adding some of the color, at least the pattern for the color, to the sphere. So it'll it'll look something closer to this. Um, not quite not quite at that level yet though. Um, so I'm starting off with a with a sphere with no material on it. I'm going to create a new shader, amplify shader, surface shader. And uh, you'll notice we, we used to have folders 1 through 3. Uh, I collapsed them into a single folder, um, just, just to be a little bit more concise. So today we're, we're working on shield part 4. And uh, we need a new material. Now we need to name this over here, Evan Daily slash shield part four. Compile. All right, so now we've got a standard black material. And uh, um, I've been running into this weird thing where I click on this and then I click away. And I don't like the orange that pops up when that happens, um, like, like the outline of everything. And I would prefer to just not accidentally click on the scene like that. So I'm going to create a new layer. Oops. And we're just going to call this not clickable. And then I'm going to click on scene elements, layer, change, change from default to not clickable change the children as well and then up here in the layers drop down at the very top we can see not clickable and anything on that layer we're gonna set to locked now if I deselect this now you can see I'm clicking around the scene and it's not actually giving us those orange lines which were super annoying before um, so now I'm going to bring this back click on the material and we're going to set this to transparent and transparent. And uh, we're not actually seeing through it. The grid that you're seeing is part of the Unity grid. So, so we can come up to gizmos and uh, show grid. Now that's gone. So that, that's going to give us a slightly more accurate representation of what's happening. Save the scene. Now I'm going to drag this back over and we can actually start creating the material. So the first thing I'm going to add is a texture. So I'm going to hit T and left click and add the shield pattern. Drag that over to Albedo and compile. Now it's not actually going to show up on the model yet and that's because we're only editing the shader. We're not actually editing the material properties, which is kind of annoying. So double click the shield, save. All right, so now when we compile this again, it should show up. There we go. Now, the, we can see there's some pixelation right here. Um, we're, we're definitely gonna wanna scale that in as well. So to do that, we're gonna use the UV coordinates. Uh, the first thing I want to do is create a float and we're going to use this for scale so we'll say shield pattern scale and instead of a constant we're going to set it to a property so that it's visible in the inspector and uh, I think I'm going to clamp it between 0 and why don't we say 5 Now, we can't just directly feed this into the into UV. Um, the the UV coordinates 
they, they depend on the individual vertices of the model. And so to kind of bridge this gap, we're going to use a texture coordinates and connect that to the UV. And uh, now this tiling input is expecting an X and a Y. Um, and so rather than setting up two floats and having an X scale and a Y scale, we're just going to use this one twice. And so for that, we can use an append. So give that the X and the Y and put that into tiling. And so now, now essentially this is the X scale as well as the Y scale. And uh, now I believe if we compile this, um, it, it's just solid black and that is because the scale is zero. So if we pull this up, now you can see it is actually scaling and rendering correctly. So that's great. Um, it is a little weird how it seems to be scaling. Well, I guess that makes sense because it, it is X and Y at the same time. It seems like it's going diagonally, kind of, but it, it, it makes sense. All right, so it still looks very static. Why don't we animate this using the time, uh, the time node? So there's a few different options for that. If we use cosine or sine, it'll be kind of like a back and forth. So we're just going to use time. And uh, we also need a scale. So we can call this time scale. Make that a property. And uh, why don't we just feed that directly? Uh, can we do that? Why don't we try that? I'm not sure if this takes a X and Y or just a single value. Uh, I think it, it must take an X and a Y. Time scale, move that up. All right, so it, it's using the same value for both X and Y. So that's why, it, that's why it seems to be going diagonally like that. And uh, it's, not, it's not terrible. Um, but uh, I, th I think we'll get more pre predictable results if we give it an X and a Y coordinate. So for that, we can use another float or we could use another time. Uh, I think a float makes the most sense. Alright, so now it's just going straight down. If we wanted it to go sideways, we could flip the order here so we could do the time into the X. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, so I think this was a decent amount of progress. Uh, you guys have been watching for 8 minutes, so I, I think that's a, a healthy amount of progress for, for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I've really enjoyed making these, these videos. I hope you've enjoyed watching them. I'll see you guys tomorrow.